Welcome to Liberty Explained. My name is Chris Spangle, and this is your guide to libertarianism. Our goal is to share libertarian solutions for the future and explain the philosophy, breaking it down. Visit libertyexplained.com to subscribe to this podcast and uh, wearelibertarians.com for the others, and to search out a library of issues and book recommendations. Today, we're going to talk about what is the greatest thing about liberty and what is the greatest flaw. And uh, joining me are my co hosts, Julia Geyer. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And Levy Rainey, thank you for being here. Of course. Julia, the funny thing about this, like this question, she's like, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. No confidence whatsoever. And then we're like, so what would you say? And she's like, well, it's predicated on blah, blah, blah. And this is great. <laughs> you had like such a great in-depth answer. So... I'm going to have to start ho- posting some of the bloopers, the uh, the behind the yeah. scenes up on the Instagram. So make sure you go follow the Instagram at Liberty Explained WAL, uh, where we post all these shows. Uh, on They're also on YouTube. They're on the website. They're on Facebook. They're on podcast and your audio. Uh, so th- they're everywhere. So what is the greatest thing about Liberty? Um I'm going to go first and give them a little bit of time to think about their answers, but I know this probably varies for other people, but you know the listener that that solicited this question, asked this question, um, had had wanted to know the flaws and the greatest things. Talk talk trash about liberty while you're talking nice about it. Mine is a concept called spontaneous order, and this concept is basically that order, which is you know we typically think of order like you have to have the government and these laws have to exist and you've got to have a constitution and that's order. And so, like, that's the concept, right? But libertarians believe that order comes from the markets adjusting to the needs of individuals as judged by the price system. So, basically, the price system is what will you pay for it? So, Levy is an artist. You see a great painting behind her in the video. Let's say you, you it's not based on the labor th- theory of value, which is I put in X hours, each of my hours are worth this. So, this painting is worth $400. Levy can say, this painting's worth $4,000 because I can get them to pay for it. And so that's how we, as libertarians, tend to judge uh, the price system. So, you know, this was, spontaneous order was once, um, like, how do geese know to fly in that V? Or how do people drive around a roundabout without incident? And so that's just a, a slight example of nature's order coming out. And there's a classic parable of efficiency of the marketplace called I Pencil by Leonard Reed. Leonard Reed started the first libertarian think tank called Fee, the Foundation for Economics, uh, a Foundation for an Economic Education, I believe. Um, <clears throat> and so, and and he goes through this beautiful long explanation showing a pencil is made up of many parts from around the world to solve a simple problem, the need to write things down. So I need to write something down. I have no idea how to do it. And the marketplace responds. No one invented the pencil. No one came up with the first pencil. There were people who scratched something out and then said, this thing works. And then another person picked it up and said, I've got a way to make this better. And over time, with each generation, it evolves and improves. And so men and women from around the world contribute cedar or lacquer or graphite or ferrule, the, the little piece that goes around. Factus is also a part of it. Pumice, wax, glue. They added the labor necessary to make it work. Numerous people are involved in that process, including the sweeper in the factory or the lighthouse keeper guiding the ship into the, into the port to drop things off. Leonard Reed wrote, There is still a fact more astounding. The absence of a mastermind, of anyone dictating or forcibly directing these countless actions, which bring me into being. No trace of such a person can be found. Instead, we find the invisible hand at work. And the lesson I have to teach is this. Leave all creative energies uninhibited. Merely organize society to act in harmony with this lesson. Let society's legal apparatus remove all obstacles the best it can. Permit those creative know-hows freely to flow. Have faith that free men and women will respond to the invisible hand. This faith will be confirmed. So I just think it's a beautiful concept that something like a pencil or all these various things can just create, that they create themselves through the invisible hand of the market. 
So that is what I like. Uh, I was waiting for one of you to jump in and see if you like spontaneous order too, but apparently I'm all alone. Um, oh, I, no, that's, yeah. <laughs> Good job, Chris. <laughs> this is our fourth episode. We're getting the chemistry right, so, um, so if I if I pause like that, that's that's usually what I'm doing. I'm not thinking about you know my existential crisis. So you had more to say. It's cool. no, so, Julia. What is your favorite thing about liberty? Uh, well, I love liberty so much. Um, it touches every part of a person's life, the more liberty you have, the better your life is. Um, if I had to narrow it down to one ideal, I would say, I would say that the more liberty someone has, the more likely they are to be able to create their dreams or their goals or achieve the things that they're working toward. Um, I think that, you know, when you start removing someone's liberties, um, they often go into survival instead of, you know, um, a more positive frame of mind in terms of like building their life in a positive way you know they're not just the more liberty someone has they're they're not just surviving any longer they're they're thriving you know um and i think that i've always considered myself to be so lucky to be born in america and to have the freedoms and liberties that we have and i i'm an entrepreneur so i I hold that close to my heart, the liberty that I have, because I understand that had I been born somewhere else in a country that, you know, I where as a woman, I might not have had the same liberties or even as a man. Um, I just have so many of them in my life and I wouldn't have been able to start businesses and pursue my dreams and my goals and stuff. So I think that the, the amount of liberty that you, that we have in America and that an individual has in their life really alters the entire path of their life. And um, yeah, my favorite thing is that um, I just have so much freedom to create the life that I want, that I want, you know? So. Yeah. And, and I mean, you're, it's a little autobiographical because, you know, exactly. you're in a situation, I mean, I don't know if you want to talk about that, but you're in a situation where, you know, you had planned and dreamed, and then all of a sudden, the government didn't let it let it take place. Yeah, yeah. So what Chris is talking about is during the lockdown, I had to shut down one of my businesses because um, I owned, uh, still own a transportation business, but it's shut down, probably permanently. But at this point, I really don't know. Um, but wow, what a wonderful feeling it is to have had that experience of like seeing a need in the market and like filling it and like making it work like that's like that was like thrilling for me and uh i just wish that for everyone not specifically that but just like whatever people want to do i want them to go for it and achieve that and um liberty plays a huge part in that obviously so that would be my favorite thing about liberty um and go ahead i supposed to say the my least favorite thing about liberty we'll, we'll do that next to oh, leave okay, you okay, okay. what's okay. your favorite what's the greatest thing about liberty to you um as i mentioned in a previous episode i am mostly primarily motivated by my religious convictions and there's this quote by leo tolstoy um that i was talking with chris about earlier it said that christianity uh, with its doctrine of humility, uh, humility and forgiveness and love is incompatible with the state um, because of its haughtiness and its violence and its punishment and the wars. And my thinking is like, it's personally my, pri like my primary goal is to love and serve my neighbor. And how can I do that in the most effective way possible? 
And I see the government as this less effective third party stepping in and taking that role from me. And that relieves my guilt and my conviction to do that because they said, oh, you don't need to do this. We'll do it for you. But instead, we're going to do a terrible job. And so it creates just a whole society of people that are just completely desensitized to the needs of their neighbor because we pass the buck along to the government. But we don't actually know how effective our love could be if we simply just like help them ourselves. And I think that's why I'm interested in liberty is because it's it's just more effective. It's more it's a more effective way of loving people. Hmm. Very nice. Very nice. So nice. Nice. So sweet. We're just like, oh, <laughs> it's so sweet. Oh. <laughs> I love it. It's really great. Um, all right. So let's talk about the greatest flaw of liberty. And I've found it to be two things. The first is that this is a really big paradigm shift for people to, especially in a low trust society like we're developing into, to trust their fellow man in a market based system, especially, you know, as just it feels like the world's falling apart, even though it's really not. And then libertarians, like all human beings, are perf imperfect messengers, and they often fail at communicating the message in a way that help closes that closes that trust gap. You know, so you you sort of go, I don't want to be in a free society with no laws with that guy. You know, mm -hmm. and so it's 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 a lot. It's a big thing. That's kind of why we're doing this in chunks is to try and help kind of shave that down. So those are mine, uh, Julia. What are what are some of yours? Um. I mean, I have to agree with you. The first thing you said, like, I don't know if I would say it's a flaw of liberty because I don't actually think liberty has any flaws. Liberty is perfect. I just that really, sucks. what a I, suck. I revere her. <laughs> um, no, I think that in terms of talking about liberty and, you know, exploring it, the the most frustrating difficult thing for me is when you introduce the concepts of liberty to someone that's new to it um people in in our society have become so mentally dependent on the state on the government um that it it really takes for me it takes it's taken me many long winded conversations to be able to get that person to grasp the idea of not depending on the state for all the things that they depend on them and to introduce the idea that, you know, if, if individuals had more liberty, we wouldn't need the state and individuals collectively or individually are capable of taking care of the things that the state is involved in right now and actually doing a much better job that is um oh <laughs> it's painful for me to, to talk to people about that but i like to do it but it i find it frustrating so <clears throat> it's um it's it's introducing a totally new idea to someone that's basically what it is in a nutshell and it, that's always hard i think you know if it, if it goes against what people are born into and have lived in their entire lives. Of course, I guess it should be a little difficult. Um, yeah, I think, and I, I have to say the same two things you said, I can't find anything else that's like, you know, wrong or difficult about liberty. I think um, there's, there's a lot of distrust in our society, which I understand, you know, um, in our media, we have our fears, played upon over and over for our entire lives. So um, we've been, we've been read this narrative for our whole life of, you know, of the focus on only the bad things that happen in society and, and, and the crimes and the, the injustices. And that's like hard focus on all those things. The thing that I always come to when people say things like, oh, the world's crazy and everyone's fucked up right now. And like, you know, people have like a really like glass half empty view is I always say, you know, the majority of people in the world are working hard, trying to take care of their families, trying to have a good time, living a pretty good life. And that's the majority of the world. So I think 
the mistrust or the distrust is um it's difficult you know that's a that's also a really foreign concept for americans specifically i think levy what what do you think the greatest flaw is for me, the first thing that comes to my mind is less based on the concept or philosophy of li liberty ex itself, but but more so like the Libertarian Party. When you're trying to exp explain these um, these ideas of liberty within the Libertarian Party, when people are being introduced to that, is the is the outskirts of people that libertarianism is uh, attracts. I guess um, oh. they're very aggressive, um, misogynistic very racist people included in this group of like alt-right people um that makes the message of liberty through um, the lens of libertarianism difficult for me so that's less based on like you know the philosophy of it but that's something difficult for a lot of people to even hear out this message of liberty because they're like i've seen the type of people that are attracted to this um political party and i don't want to be associated with that and so it's like they have the moral high ground because they're they vote um, Democrat or something. It's is that something that's really hard for me to actually get people to engage in a conversation with because it deals more with morals than like facts and logic. I agree, <laughs> and I've I taken a lot, of, a lot of Good crap point. for pointing that out. I <clears throat> I just think that uh, a lot of the um, the alt right adjacent crowd sometimes is uh, they're very vocal. And then the rest of the people who are more centrist or left or or just not interested in cruelty are are silent. And I think that's definitely something that is is not great. So, all right. With that, we want to thank you for listening to Liberty Explained. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode. We hope that you'll listen to more. Go check out libertyexplained.com. Subscribe. Go rate and review this in iTunes, Google Play Podcast, all, all the places where you rate and review everything or go watch us on YouTube and Instagram TV. All right. With that being said, Julia, Levy, thank you so much for uh, joining hey. my co-hosts. So. Thank you. It's been fun. All right. Thank you. And we will talk to you again soon.